Hello, welcome back to my um, talk about my 2017 presentation to the AFCC. And so I've talked about sort of the, the context of how it emerged and the idea that I'm actually doing this for a purpose. And it's not the purpose of educating them because I'm not optimistic they will accept the education. Um, if, if they are unethical, lazy, ignorant, and incompetent, um, I don't expect them to change. That's that's who they are. Uh, one of my favorite sayings is, don't try to teach a pig to sing. It just frustrates you and annoys the pig. So um, I'm not out here to teach the ignorant, incompetent, lazy, unethical uh, forensic psychologists how to do psychology. Um, if they're participating in the psychological abuse of children, which they are, if they are participating in the uh, psychological abuse, spousal abuse of their parents using the children as weapons, which they are, they deserve to lose their license. And they're in violation, all of them, all of them are in violation of 2.01 boundaries of competence based on the assessment of delusional thought disorders on its own. Just that issue, the diagnostic assessment of delusional thought disorders, none of the forensic psychologists are competent in the mental status exam of thought and perception, which is the diagnostic assessment for delusional thought disorders. And I will cite to Walters and Friedlander um, in the journal Family Court Review, which is the flagship journal of the AFCC in 2016, they identified the possibility of a shared persecutory delusion, citing to me. And so off of that single quote, or those two quotes from Walters and Friedlander in their article, all forensic psychologists should be aware that a possible shared persecutory delusion is a differential diagnosis. So they all should be competent in the diagnostic assessment of delusional thought disorders based on that possibility. None of them are because the only place you get competence in the assessment of delusional thought disorders is working schizophrenia. I have 12 years working schizophrenia where I was trained annually in the diagnostic assessment of delusional thought disorders. I have that competence. Standard 2.01 C or D or something, C I think it is, says that um, if you're in a new area such as delusional thought disorders, that you're not competent in, but you're gonna do that anyway for whatever reason, you need to get consultation. So they should all be consulting with me. None of them are. 2017, I gave them my consultation. And four slides um, that were the focus of that. All the other slides was simply educating the ignorance of the psychologist I was talking with. So let's be clear on that. I have to educate them before I can have a professional discussion with them. So the first slides is educating the ignorance of the psychologist so that then I can I point out to them that there are four requirements for professional competence, um, four slides. So it's family systems, personality disorders, um, and attachment, and complex trauma. Uh, and the, replication, the um, reenactment of trauma. And so they have to be um, competent in all four of those domains uh, required by standard 2.01. And none of them are, and none of them care. And there's no motivation for them to self-learn. And so all you parents are saying, no, Dr. Children, do more, do more, do more. No. Okay. The motivation has to come this direction. They have to want the information. If I'm just trying to give them, and I'm, it's just falling on the ground. Where's the motivation from their part, which should be there based on ethical standards? So I was, uh, I wasn't there just to, uh, to, uh, you know, improve my standing or anything. I was there for a purpose of putting them on notice, not because I expect they would we'll do something in 2017, but because in 2013, I'm going to be able to tell you right now that they've been on notice the entire time. I've done my due diligence. Where are they? That puts them on a um, about, um, class action lawsuit if 
you guys can figure that out, the attorneys. Maybe it doesn't fit in the law. I don't know. It, I, I think a RICO could apply, but again, I'm not a lawyer. Um, but my job as a clinical psychologist and as your ally in this is to provide the documentation from clinical psychologists if the lawyers ever want to sue the AFCC and APA and licensing boards, all the 50 states, because the 50 states are the ones that are responsible for the licensing boards. So now you got all 50 states, the AP, AFCC and the APA on a, mal, um, a class action lawsuit for negligence in their oversight of the situation. So this 2017 presentation was my providing them with notice. And then we have a period of time where we get to see their response. So what was their response to this information from Dr. Childress regarding ethical standards of practice? They, they withdrew the continuing education units for all the participants. So if Dr. Childress goes back and tells them about their requirements for professional competence, they pull the continuing education units for all everyone, all the psychologists who heard that information. They don't want to know. They don't want to solve this pathology if that's their response. Instead of inviting me to talk, instead of consulting with me, instead of saying, hey, Dr. Childers, how do we solve this in the, the family courts? They can offer up you know, three slots to an APA, or to an AFCC national convention to Dr. Childers. I can talk about the diagnostic assessment. I can talk about uh, you know, boundaries of competence. And I can talk about treatment um, issues. Three seminars. If they want them, invite me. They don't want me. The last time I talked to you, you didn't even give CE units to the people who taught that level of, you don't want my information. Why did they re re take the CE units away? Those are given out like candy at these national conventions. Nobody ever pulls them because Gene Mercer, um, who's a, an experimental psychologist. She's never been licensed. She's never had the coursework to be a clinical psychologist. So in order to be licensed, you have to take a special type of doctorate degree. It's a doctorate degree in clinical psychology. Her doctorate degree is in experimental psychology. If you look at her Vita and under Lester, which was her name at the time of her actual research, She's in perceptual research, these various illusion kinds of things. She's not working in any clinical domain. She's an experimental psychologist at a small college, okay, teaching general education courses and doing her experiments on uh, perceptual stuff. She then retires and now sees herself as an expert in clinical psychology where she's talking about different types of pathology and their treatment, attachment pathology. She now sees herself as an expert in attachment because she's read some books. She's not an expert in anything. But over here in the family court, she's actually a testifying expert witness and stuff because that's the like, low standards you have over here. So anyway, Jean Mercer um, is triggered by the fact that I use the word attachment and oh my goodness, is she triggered by Dorsey Pruder um, and in the four day workshops. And she, uh, Jean Mercer seems kind of obsessively fixated on this parental alienation kind of topic or idea. And so she sees everything through this lens of parental alienation and she can't expand out and she kind of gets triggered by that. I worry that she's kind of getting older um, because I'm, I'm 68, I'm getting kind of older. And I graduated high school graduated high school in 1972. I look at her Vita, I think she graduated her doctoral program in like 1968. So I think she graduated from a doctoral program before I even graduated from high school. And I'm an old guy. So I, I, I personally, and she's not a clinical psychologist. She's never been licensed. She's never um, even been qualified to sit for license. She never had the year of pre-doctoral supervised training. She never had the year of supervised post-doctoral training. And none of the coursework. And she's never sat for the licensing board exam ever in her life. She's not assessed, diagnosed, or treated anything ever in her life. More or less attachment pathology. Here, I'm a clinical psychologist. I've treated lots of things, ADHD, autism, you know, and trauma pathology. I've worked in the foster care, treating attachment pathology. I have early childhood mental health expertise. And she thinks she knows more than I do. It's like, 
can we say a little bit of grandiosity there based on her Vita and my Vita? And, and But she launches this campaign. And the interesting thing about this, though, is it's not just me saying this because she blogged about it. And I'll put the blogs down below, the, the link to the blog. I checked a while ago and they're still up there. It's like, Gene, you don't realize you're like documenting your harassment into the record. So the first blog, she talks about how she does this with professionals generally. So if she disagrees with a professional, what she will do is she will generate, she will go in and figure out some technicality that uh, she can get the CE units withdrawn on. So she knows the technical aspects of giving away CE units, and they're given away by the AP, APA, American Psychological Association, once you authorize it. So um, so she knows the technical rules, and then she finds some technicality to get the CE units withdrawn, and then she uses the withdrawal of CE units on a technicality to imply that the sponsoring organization had rejected the content of the seminar. So she is really manipulative in that, in trying to slander the professional reputations of people she doesn't agree with. Now, this isn't me saying this. You can read her blog. She's saying that's her approach with several people. And then she says, oh, Childress and Pruder, we did that with them. And we're waiting to see what happens. So we, we launched this campaign of harassment of the AFCC based on a technicality. We'll see what happens. So then the second blog is after they removed the CE units, she's crowing about how it worked, that they pulled the CE units um, based on, on her harassment of the AFCC and slander of Ms. Bruder and I. Interestingly, the AFCC never got a hold of me. So they never asked me what was going on. They never talked to me. They didn't they probably even look at the slides we presented. Because if they look at the slides, which are linked below as well, if, if they look at the slides, then, yeah, there, there's nothing we talked about that's controversial or anything. We're educating them about what Dorsey does, okay? We're not allowed to educate people about what Dorsey does and fixes things. Nobody's supposed to know about Dorsey Pruder and the high road. We have to keep that absolutely silent. No, that's what, that's what these conventions are about, is bringing ideas together and exchanging ideas. We explained exactly what she does, exactly how she got at a professional level. And I was on stage the entire time. So I think the technicality they got was Dorsey Pruder doesn't have a doctorate degree. And so maybe it's that they have to have doctorate degrees to get, you know, C units from APA or whatever. I don't know the technicality she does, but I think that's what it is. She, Dor but Dorsey was, I was on stage the entire time. And holy cow, you present at national organizations, students present all the time. They don't have doctorate degrees and they present with their mentors and stuff. And nobody, that's the silliest thing. But what she then does is she, because she uh, admires, uh, or Mercer, um, Jean Mercer, um, because she distorts and lies about my position. She says I'm a parental alienation person, and I'm not. I wish it would go away, but she categorizes me over with the uh, Burnett's and Gottlieb's and all that low life group of professionals who do not uh, reject the guy who reject the diagnostic guidance of the American Psychiatric Association and the ethical guidance of the American Psychological Association. She puts me in that group and then uses that to slander my reputation. And so she goes into the courts and does the same thing. And because she posts blogs that distort what I'm saying and saying I'm all sorts of don't know what I'm doing and everything because she thinks she knows more about attachment pathology than the actual clinical psychologist who's worked with attachment pathology. She thinks she knows more. So she puts her posts up around on the blog and then opposing counsel goes and finds her because that's the only person that will like, argues with Dr. Childers and takes a different position because she's like in a little bit of an altered reality. By the way, I've actually hired, I have a defamation attorney on a uh, retainer, kind of specifically for her. Because if she continues a slander of saying I'm a parental alienation person, she can get a letter for, um, for that. They're saying stops defaming my professional reputation. I do not believe in parental alienation. It does not exist. Stop telling people I, that's what I believe. And then slandering me with, with all this stuff. 
So, um, so he wrote two blogs um, that that this describe um, what she does. But then when she got the CE units, she then goes into these court cases and testifies that the um, the withdrawal of the CE units by the AFCC, because they're linked to the AFC, the APA is actually the provider, that the AFCC and APA have reviewed the content of what Dr. Childress and Dorsey Pruder are saying and have rejected the content. And that's why they pulled the CE units. So she dis- she generates the thing and then she distorts what that thing is to slander the professional reputations of Dr. Childress and Dorsey Pruder. And I've got the testimony, I've got the transcripts from the testimony where she does exactly that. She uses those, those um, CE units to then slander my professional reputation uh, uh, by implying that this AFCC. Now, the AFCC never contacted me uh, about, about any of this. Um, about what happened or about the withdrawal of the C units. And they're just C units. For, I don't know. Because Dorsey doesn't have a college degree. I, I don't know why. But when I got the, the testimony transcript um, where she is saying this, and had from uh, my attorney was saying, we got this quote from, uh, from Gene Mercer. What's your response? That the APA and AFCC um, have, don't approve of your methods or ABPA. I got that. I sent it to the AFCC and said, can I get a response? I don't know why these CE units were withdrawn. Um, And I sent it to, I think the APA, because that's who they cite. And the AP said, you're going to have to talk to the AFCC. I went and emailed the AFCC and why were these withdrawn? And they said, we don't know. And so there's no answer from anyone as to why it was they took the action that they did. And personally, I think there's some potential legal stuff um, about asking them to correct uh, the defamation um, of my character that's being offered out there, that they didn't review content, that they didn't, and this was a technical issue. But I think it's going to be a small point, and I'm not, I'm not really that focused on it at this point in time. But that that indicates what happens out here. So I take Dorsey to the AFCC, we talk, we present, we tell them what the protocol is, we, we tell them about their ethical standards and the consequences is they retaliate against us by pulling the CE units for everybody who hurt us. Um, and to imply that there's something wrong with what Dr. Childers and Dorsey Pruder are saying at the instigation of one of these random people who occupied the family courts, Jean Mercer, who has no clinical degree. She's never assessed, diagnosed, treated anything. She just has an opinion. And that indicates an interesting feature of the family courts that she's brought in as a testifying expert witness um, when she's just a random person who asserts she's an expert in things. Bill Burnett asserts he's an expert in things. Gottlieb asserts she's an expert. So everybody over here simply says, I'm an expert. Did you people believe him? It's like insane over here. And that's because you have no real psychologists. You have no clinical psychologists. Now, um, hopefully I won't get in trouble for that because one time, you know, I'll wrap up here. But one time I, I said in the blog, um, after some testimony of Jean Mercer, that she wasn't a real psychologist because she's not licensed. Now, in California, um, the term psychologist is a protected term. It's called a protected term, which means you cannot say you're a psychologist in the state of California unless you're licensed. That's a requirement that to say you're a psychologist, you must be licensed by law. Otherwise, if you have a doctor degree, but you're not licensed, you're a professor or you're a doctor of psychology, but you're not a psychologist unless you're licensed, at least in California. So she came in to testify in California, Jean Mercer did, and held herself out to the court that she is a psychologist. That's in violation of California law and um, that, that 
what I was saying in my blog. And I also wrote a, a letter to her, standard 1.04, informal notification, um, then that there was ethical violations in her testimony that I was concerned about, uh, boundaries of competence issues and, and, uh, and the, the issue of holding herself out to the court as a psychologist when she's not in violation of California law. And T. Mercer actually posts a blog response to this saying, oh, it's ridiculous. And she has kind of dismissed it all. So she's not really concerned, it appears, about her ethical stuff. But, but because I said on my blog that she's not a real psychologist, she filed a licensing board complaint against me in California um, for uh, unprofessional practice. And then that's a whole other story. I'll tell you a little bit about that one. But um, then she thought the board sanctioned me when they didn't. Um, and so, you know, everything worked out fine with that once they heard the, the other side of the story. But I have testimony from her in court where she uses that um, and to slander me again, saying that the AFCC withdrew the CE units and my own licensing board sanctioned me for unprofessional uh, practice. No, it didn't. First off, it didn't. But second off, she didn't tell the court that she's the one that generated the board complaint against me. And then she uses it to slander my professional reputation in the courts. And I got the documentation. on that. So um, that whole situation with the AFCC and that 2017 presentation is so interesting on multiple grounds. It's interesting for what the AFCC did in response. It's interesting for exposing a, a feature of the pathology in the family courts, which is these strange, random people who hold themselves up as experts. And because everybody fights, they actually get traction and credibility for opinions that have no uh, valid basis to them. So with that, um, that's my story about my presentation to the AFCC with Ms. Pruder. Um, I'll go on and talk to you other times about other uh, interesting experiences. The uh, licensing board complaint by Jean Mercer is an interesting one. I'll, I'll discuss that, her testimony coming out to California um, to testify in that case um, was interesting. Um, you know, I'll talk about um, some other aspects uh, the forensic psychologists and some of the stuff that's happening with them. So with that, um, take care, everybody, and good luck out there.